you mentioned you bombed as a manager the first time. Yeah. Around. Yeah. Is it someone that told you you bombed, or did you feel like you bombed, or did you like did you actually bomb and? Oh, I bombed. I bombed. Why I, uh, is that? You know, I think uh, if I had to like pinpoint it, it was probably like a a, like a big sense of imposter syndrome. Right? It was I just wasn't confident in my own skin. Right. We had this. Um, the make of that particular team was interesting. So, um, I you know of the sales company I was in. Uh, I was the top, I was the fourth top seller, right? So I was number four in, in the company, right? And president's club and tons of success, all the things. And, but I was the only one that wanted to be a leader. So I was working towards that, right? And um, an opportunity came available and my, my director of sales at the time, a uh, guy named Joe Hacker, just a great friend of mine. Um, he, uh, he was like, he had this idea of like, hey, I'm going to build a super team, right? And so he took me, the number four seller promoted me to manager and on my team, one, two, and three. Right. And so at the time I was like, Oh, this is awesome. I just inherited like the all-star team. Right. Like I got the dream team. Right. Yeah. And it's like, this, we're going to crush it's a stack, you know? And what, what I didn't realize though, was that um, I didn't have credibility with these guys. Like they were my friends for sure. Right. But like, what was I going to, like, what was I going to actually tell them, right? I was still a young up and comer. These guys were seasoned sales professionals. Uh, they had been doing this a lot longer than I had. Uh, I had been, and you know, I didn't have anything to offer them. And so not only did I have nothing to offer them from a coaching or development standpoint, that wasn't like can that I stole from somebody else, or like, I was like kind of guessing my way through, right? Um, I was too heavy on the, like the accountability type of stuff. Right. So, so I was coming down harder, but I was also giving them less. And so it was like, it's just, it wasn't a winning transaction for anybody. Um, and, you know, slowly, but surely, uh, you know, this showed up in our deal execution our deal strategy. And then all of a sudden these guys just started like kind of collectively, all three of them started struggling for the first time in years. And the only X factor was me. And so I knew it, like I knew I was a problem. Right. Um, now I, I maybe I had too much pride to like maybe stand up and say that, and I was trying to fight the way through. But a lot of sleepless nights, a lot of um, uh, a lot of uh, painful lessons, you know, learned. Um, but um, tell you what, I wouldn't have been uh, a good sales leader the second and third time around had I not had that had I not had that experience. Did you know you're going to be a good sales leader the second time around? Did no, I was so, I was I had a lot of I had a lot of reservations because I, I was. You know, I was very, um, so I didn't know, like, I was like, man, the last time I did this, like, I, I, I struggled, right? And so what would help me, though, was I was very clear on my vision for myself and what I wanted to accomplish. So I was like, through a lot of executive coaching and, and, and what have you, I got really tight on, like, here's why I want to go do this. Here's why this is important to me. Here's what it's going to mean for my family. And, like, here's, like, so I was really clear on, I was, you know, this is very intentional is probably the word I'd use. But then I also was like, super, I went in super eyes wide open with like, here's the things that I'm great at. Here's my like overwhelming strengths. And here's the things that I suck at or that I've sucked at previously as a sales leader, right? And I, you know, I went to my my leader, uh, a guy named Mark Costigal, he's a CRO at Catalyst now. Um, and, you know, and I was like, very honest, it's like, man, I'm going to crush these things, but I need help here. And he was like, sign me up. And, you know, through that partnership and that relationship, I got good at things I, I, I sucked at or I was struggling with um, because I was open and honest about it. I just went in like almost like a badge of honor. Like I suck at these things. I see, you know, like, so, you know, teach me, I'm eager to learn. And, and then, you know, then I was able to close those, close those gaps and, you know, director, VP, all the stuff after that. Like, I love the humility. I love the self-awareness. Uh, mo most of my bad leaders had no idea they were bad leaders. Right? You know, it's, it's tough, right? Because I think there's what, you know, people have an identity, especially sales leaders, right? Like we're like, um, you know, alphas, type A's typically, right? And, you know, we are taught, you know, whether it's the forecast, whether it's our numbers or people, we're taught like, you know, just through like maybe social engineering, to show no weakness, to show no fear, to show no, like no vulnerability. Right. Um, 
And when you operate like that, then like you, you don't open up the opportunity to get feedback and to learn and to grow and to act on it. And, stuff like that. and that's where all the magic happens. Right. And so, um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's tough that people can't realize and see that. Um, unfortunately, I think it has more to do with like, um, just how society, you know, treats these roles in these positions. Right. So, yeah. And so the next time around, not as many sleepless nights? No, not in the same way, right? I think um, I was very confident in what I was doing and how I was doing it. I had a lot of reinforcement. I was smart enough to take everybody along for my own journey. And so like, so my boss and my coworkers, like everybody kind of knew that I was, how I was approaching this. And I was like super, like, I, I was like, I, I, what I would say is like, I, I won the PR game, right? Yeah. Like I was in all my one-on-ones, I was like, here's what I'm struggling with, here's what I'm working on, like in my team one-on-ones, I'm like, hey guys, I'm not good at this, but we're gonna work through this together as a group. Hey, you know, like with my with my leaders, it's like, hey, you know, this is a developmental opportunity, so I'd love your feedback. And then I would go ask for feedback afterwards, right? And I, so I was just like super, super, super transparent. And um, so I didn't have as many sleepless nights. Now, what I what I did have though, that was that I, um, because, because I like was like super, uh, intentional of making the move, you know, I, I had, uh, you know, I went from a very comfortable situation, you know, top dog in the SDR shop, making tons of money, you know, to tie myself to a way bigger variable, um, in, in the, in the sales shop. And I got a family to feed. Right? right. And, you know, it's like, yes, I had more upside on the money, but I had drastically more downside too. Right. And, and so that was like a, if anything, that's what really kept the urgency up on those those first probably year, you know, eighteen months.